Today, we're going to take a little tour of Parkson's rotary drum thickener, the ThickTech, but we're going to do it a little differently because we're going to do it in virtual reality, which should be pretty cool because we're going to get a perspective and be able to talk about a lot of things we wouldn't be able to do on a live piece of equipment. So without further ado, let's move from our little augmented reality here to the virtual reality system. Here we are in Parkson's virtual showroom, so let's head over to the ThickTech rotary drum thickener. Thickening is a process where we're taking sludge that's typically between 0.5 to 1% solids and moving it up to around 5 to 8% solids. Now that's just really the median that we see most of the time. Um, we see uh, sludge coming in as thin as a quarter percent, and in some situations we have it leaving at you know, 12 to 15%. It really depends on the process and the sludge. Um, as sludge comes into the system, whether it's coming off of a biological system or even primary sludge, it can't be thickened as is. We have to add a polymer. And that polymer is really the majority of the life cycle cost of owning a thickener. It's, it's around 80 to 90% of the entire life cycle cost versus the capital requirement of the thickener itself. So a lot of the features we're going to be talking about built into the ThickTech are really about efficiency. It's about using as little polymer as we possibly can and getting the most efficient separation and the best use of that polymer and the, therefore the lowest life cycle cost. Uh, and the first thing we're going to see here is that as the sludge comes in, once it's mixed with the polymer, which is mixed in line upstream, that's where the mixing occurs. Then it goes into this first part of the RDT, which is the flocculation tank. And this is not for, for mixing, this is for resonance time. And this is for the flock and the, the, the polymer to really set up with the sludge and produce a really good flock. So to start that process off, you'll see our first design feature here, which is a tangential inlet. So what this does is it removes any sort of shear as the sludge comes into the tank and it sort of induces a cyclical motion going up. So if we had the tank that had just a perpendicular um, entrance on it and it came in and it shot up the tank and then out into the drum, you wouldn't have nearly as much resonance time as you do with that sort of circular um, uh, cyclical motion as the sludge comes up. And this is one of the first things you'll see as far as you know, capital cost versus ownership cost is um, putting the pipe on uh, just you know, perpendicularly to the end of the tank is, is a lot less expensive. So that's typically what you see out there. Um, this costs a little bit more to, to construct, and but it reduces the life cycle cost greatly. So as we step into the flock tank, which we can in the virtual world here, um, now that we've induced that motion of that sludge, it sort of comes up and swirls up through this flock tank and really gets a lot of the resonance time, and it's pushed along with these baffles. And then when it's time to exit the tank, again, tangential exit. And this is a big deal because now that we've got that really nice flock built up, that popcorn flock, we'll call it, and we'll, we'll put a picture here in the video. Um, the last thing we want to do is have a perpendicular exit where it's going and coming around and making a hard left into the drum. And then we're losing and we're shearing some of that flock we spent all this time building up. So the tangential exit is just as important as a tangential inlet to really keeping that process going. So let's head into the drum now. So we'll follow this pipe and boom, here we are in the drum itself. And, and this is where we can build in a lot of efficiencies and really get everything out of that, that polymer and all that the, that we're adding to the sludge to get the water release to be as efficient as possible. And the first thing we're gonna see here are these things here and they're called split augers. So they look like flights, which induce sludge movement down the drum, but they do the opposite. They actually retain the sludge in, in four sections within the drum. And the sludge actually has to overflow each one of these split augers. So you can see that it goes all the way around. Now, here's the other thing. When the sludge first comes in the drum, it's going to be mostly water. It's going to be 99% water. So the first split auger at the end here, you can see, is it's significantly bigger than the ones coming next. Because we're going to have a lot of water. We're going to have a lot of volume. So we really want to have a lot of resonance time in that first section. So that's why that one's the biggest. And then as the sludge comes down the drum, the water is released and the overall volume in the drum is reduced. And now we can have smaller and smaller split augers until we get to the end and we have the smallest one before the sludge goes on. Now the other thing that these split augers do is they get the sludge to flip over each one of them. So we're not allowing any sludge bypass. Um, when, when this RDT is in operation or any RDT is in operation, you have a a decent amount of sludge really filling up the bottom of this drum. It's almost like a semi-filled pipe. So if you allowed 
if you allow the, the sludge to sort of just go through an empty RDT, you're going to have a lot of bypassing. And when I'm talking about bypassing, I'm saying that sludge and water are not coming in contact with the, with the screening surface. Because if the screening surface is the only place where water is being released. So if you have sludge that's meandering here in the middle, and water that's meandering here in the middle, and bypassing, it's not coming in contact with that screening material, and if it's not coming in contact, the water is not releasing. So the first thing we're doing is getting that sludge to flip over in this direction as it comes down the drum. Now, the second direction we want to get it to roll is this way, right? So again, we're inducing a rolling motion to continually get all that sludge and water in contact with our screening material. And to do that, we have these items here called roll bars, and these go along the entire length of the drum. And these roll bars induce that rolling motion of the sludge as it goes this way. So we're, we're getting it to flip over and roll this direction, and we're getting it to flip and roll over this direction. And that is, again, ensuring that all that sludge and water, including the addition of resonance time, is also ensuring that it gets in contact with the screening material. And that's where the water release happens. And that's another huge efficiency um, and a huge difference you'll see of this RDT versus others on the market. The other RDTs are just empty. It's just a drum. It might have a couple small flights, but that's it. And that's a big difference when it comes to polymer usage. So now when we've got our water and our sludge coming in contact with our screening material, now we need to look at the screening material itself. What you want here for an efficient separation is a lot of open area, because the more area, the more place for water to go and leave the system. However, the, you have to have the opening sizes, the individual opening sizes, as small as possible, because we don't want to lose solids, and that's where we get um, you know, a really clean filtrate. So what we're looking for is a material for the screening that is a, a large amount of overall open area, but very small individual opening sizes. And of the materials available that are typically used, we see you know, wedge wire, uh, perforated sheet, and woven wire mesh. It's very clear, and we'll have the, you know, them displayed here in this video, is that the woven wire mesh has a huge amount of overall open area, but has the smallest opening sizes. So you get the most water release and retain the most solids. And that's a real big um, you know, an issue with efficiency because you don't want to have that low capture rate. You don't want to have a lot of solids leaving your drum because you're applying polymer to those solids. And if they're leaving your drum, you're not getting anything out of that. You're losing polymer. So now that we've got the water release happening and it goes through the drum, that's where if we kind of step down to the bottom here, we go into the drain pan. And this is where all the water goes and it drains off and it can go back uh, to you know, the head of the plant or wherever else, you know, depending on the system where you need it. And you can see under here that the drum is supported by six of these trunnion wheels here. Um, and that's what the drum itself rolls on. And that's really the only moving parts aside from the motor. So hopping back into the drum here, as we are now ready to leave the drum, it goes into this area here, which is the discharge chute. Um, there's different variations that are available of this, but this is the standard discharge chute that we typically use. So let's step outside the drum a little bit and talk about some of the features that you would more likely see, because we were not, obviously not going to be walking through the drum when you're using this. So the first is really the access points, and we see that we have these two big access doors here at the end. And this is nice to be able to take um, you know, samples of your effluent sludge, and also a big part of this is being able to see the sludge itself and how it's reacting with the polymer, and that's really how you um, do your polymer dosing, is you're looking at the sludge and you're seeing how it's reacting. Is it is it too thin because the polymer is too low? Or is the polymer dose too high and causing uh, blinding of the screen and you see that there's no water release, that sort of thing. So that's what's nice about having this, this visual here at the end of the RDT. So now let's head over to the side of the unit because we want to talk about the spray header. Now, uh, one thing that we mentioned was um, blinding. You know, blinding is an issue for RDTs. If there's ever a time where the polymer dose is too high, it can clog a lot of the openings in the screening material and cause blinding. So you want it to always be very clean. The cleaner it is, the more open area, the more water release, the more efficiency, and the lower the polymer usage. So what we have designed in here is a high pressure spray header, and we provide standard a booster pump to get a really high pressure on that to keep that clean. Now the other big part of that is keeping the nozzles of the spray header clean, especially if you use plant water or any water with any sort of impurities. And normally you have to go through and pull off each of the nozzles and clean them by hand. And, and because it's a bit of a pain, it doesn't tend to happen as much as it needs to. 
So what we have incorporated here is an internal brush, and you see this little paddle wheel at the end here. That is attached to a brush that goes the entire length of the spray header. And whenever you want to clean it, all you have to do is go over there and just turn that thing a couple times. The wire brush turns on the inside, cleans out the solids, and when that brush is turned, it actually opens a valve here at the end of the spray header that you can see in here that now lets all those solids that are cleaned off fall down into the discharge chute and they go on with the, the thickened solids. And then when you crank it back the other way and close it again, it closes that valve and then it does a little bit more fine cleaning and it cleaps those, um, that drum clean. And the last part we wanna talk about here on the RDT is really the, the access points you're gonna use the most often. And that's these little removable panels here on the side. So you can go in and they're just removable by hand and they lift off of a little lip here and you can set them down and then now you can see inside the drum. There's two things really that you need to see here. One is the trunnion wheels that we discussed a little earlier. These are in a wetted area and they're run on bearings. So those bearings need grease. So we have Zerk fittings put on each one of them and they can be accessed through um, removing these side panels to be greased. Now, we do offer options where we put all these Zerk fittings to a central, you know, an external greasing uh, point on the outside and they can be greased externally, um, which is an option if you don't want to have to bend down and, and lift these panels off and do them all individually. The only issue with that is it removes um, sort of a forced visual inspection when these things are greased, but either one works. And the other thing that you really want to have access to underneath the drum is to look at the filtrate. And the filtrate really tells you about, you know, how you're doing as far as polymer dosing. So if you're putting in a lot of polymer and you're not seeing a lot of filtrate come out, that means you're blinding. If you're seeing the filtrate be dirty where you can see solids in it, then you know you're underdosing the polymer. And you know, this unit can easily reach 98, 99% capture rate. So this, this water is normally coming off crystal clear. And the other thing, as we mentioned, is most of the water is at the beginning of the drum. So you'll see a lot more water at the front than at the end. And that's when you see that sort of cascade of, of less water going through the drum, that's when you really know you've nailed your, your polymer dosage. So that's one nice access point. And those are easy to take off and put back on again. Um, you know, as we kind of went through this, you'll see that there are a lot of design features. And again, those design features are specifically about really making this an efficient, efficient drum. So it uses significantly less polymer than any other drum out there. And we love to show this off. So um, any chance to, you know, pilot it and especially side by side pilot it is, is more than welcome. We love um, that head to head type competition because this thing is just so efficient and the polymer usage is so low. And considering polymer is, you know, 90% of the life cycle cost of owning these, um, you know, it really makes it worth it to have all those additional design pieces built in and not just getting, you know, your run-of-the-mill drum that's just, um, you know, uh, a wedge wire drum that's wide open on inside or a perforated sheet drum that have lower capture rates and much higher polymer usage. So uh, definitely check it out and uh, I hope you enjoyed our virtual tour here. Um, and of course you can find more information on Parkson.com as well. Well, I really hope you enjoyed our virtual tour of Parkson's rotary drum thickener, the Thick Tech. To learn more about the Thick Tech, check out the link to the product page in the video description below. Also, keep your eye out at trade shows for Parkson's booth where we'll have our virtual reality setup and you can try it for yourself. It's a really cool experience. Oh.